And a very good morning to you and thank you worship team for leading us in this wonderful time of worship. Well, we continue our sermon series, Knowing God, right? Knowing God. Last week, we heard from Pastor Anthony regarding the Trinity, right? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit working together in community, working together in perfect partnership. A short story before I begin on God the Shepherd was when I was young in kindergarten, well, a time where I don't really remember what what has happened. So my mom told me about this story that I wandered off on my own, right? And got separated from my parents in Center Point, right? So the Center Point in Orchard Road, my parents actually went berserk and thought I was kidnapped. Well, I might have exaggerated, but well, my mom's not around, so I can tell the story any way I want. So, <laughs> well, they thought I was kidnapped, but actually I wandered off to Times Bookstore. I remember there's a Times Bookstore in Center Point many years ago. It has closed down. Or is it still there? I mean, I'm not, not very sure. But I wandered off the Times Bookstore and unfortunately, it was not to the self-improvement or non-friction section. If not, I would probably, probably be smarter now. Well, instead, I was found by my parents at the magazine section. I really have no idea why I ended up there. Maybe, probably because of the colourful pictures found on the magazine cover and as a young boy, you know, you're just drawn to something more colourful and pictorial. Well, this, this really might mean for me, from a very young age, I really like to explore and wander off, right? Wander around, you know, trying to f- find out where to go, what is this? Being very curious. You know, in life, I'm sure you can identify with me that we like to you know, perhaps take control of our own life. We like to turn left, turn right, make these decisions on our own. We really want to be the masters of our own life, whether we make wise or unwise decisions because we feel like it or we think this is the best move to make. But the Bible knows that you and I love to do this. And the, the Bible calls us sheep. Right? So like sheep, you know, wandering off on its own. That is why the Bible says a shepherd is needed, a shepherd to guide us, guide the flock, guide the sheep, to prevent the sheep from being lost. So really a shepherd is one that guides and directs in a particular direction. A shepherd is one that guides and directs in a particular direction. Well, this isn't an unfamiliar image of who God is, right? A famous and common Bible passage found in Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in one. Uh, We hear this over and over again. The Lord is my shepherd. But what exactly is a shepherd? Well, in the past, I mean, back in the time of when Joseph was in Egypt, people had a very negative view of a shepherd. Well, so this scene that I'm about to share with you from the book of Genesis is when Jacob finally went down to Egypt to meet Joseph, to reunite with Joseph, father and son who has been lost for many years. Well, after they, were happily, after they happily reunited, Joseph was preparing his brothers and fathers, you know, what to say. It's like he prepped them before an interview with the big boss. Because Joseph already knew what Pharaoh would ask them, what question Pharaoh would ask. So he prepped them beforehand. So this is found in Genesis chapter 46, verse 31 to 34. Joseph said to his brothers and to his father's household, I will go up and tell Pharaoh and will say to him, My brothers and my father's household who were in the land of Canaan have come to me. And the men are shepherds, for they have been keepers of the livestock, and they have brought their flocks and their herds and all that they have. When Pharaoh calls you and says, What is your occupation? You shall say, Your servants have been keepers of livestock from our youth even until now, both we and our fathers, in order that you may dwell in the land of Goshen. For every shepherd is an abomination to the Egyptians. I titled my sermon today, It's a Shepherd and Abomination. Well, the Egyptians Egyptians had a very negative view of a shepherd back then. Well, so essentially what Joseph was trying to do was to prepare his family, his father, his brothers, to answer Pharaoh's question. So instead of telling them they're just mere shepherds who look after livestock, he prepped the parents, the father and the brothers to say that they are actually a wealthy family who own livestock. For many generations, they have owned livestock so that they will not be despised and looked down. 
by the Egyptians. Well, the Israelites also looked down on the shepherds. Right? So the Egyptians looked down, the Israelites too looked down on a shepherd. After God rejected King Saul, Prophet Samuel was sent to Jesse of Bethlehem to anoint one of his sons to be king. When Samuel reached Bethlehem, he called Jesse to gather all his sons before him. So Samuel started the consecration, you know, consecrate the father, followed by each and every son before him. But after the consecration and, and after Samuel presented all these, all the sons, Samuel asked Jesse, the Lord has not chosen this. Are these all the sons you have? So Jesse replied, there is still the youngest. He is tending the sheep. Right? So the youngest son who is tending the sheep, who is a shepherd, was not included in this consecration. The father didn't even think that the youngest son is worthy to be appointed as king, to be consecrated. He was left out. He was forgotten. He was cast aside. You know, maybe for you and your family, your job really is not seen as a prestigious job by your parents. Maybe typical Asian parents who want their children to be doctors, lawyers, accountants, etc., etc. Well, back in Joseph's time, this really is no difference. If your job is to tend the sheep, take care of livestock, you are not seen as an important person. You are again sidelined, cast aside. Same for the Christmas story. The shepherds were of low importance back then in society, but they were the, one of the first few groups of people to be told that Jesus Christ has been born in Bethlehem. They were given this privilege, although they were low, they were seen lowly in society. Well, if you, as mentioned, feel like a shepherd, and like, hey, yeah, maybe in life I feel cast aside by my boss. I feel forgotten by my family. We all take comfort that our Lord Jesus Christ too was once cast aside, was once despised. In fact, He Himself humbled His own self as God. In Philippians 2, 6-8, it says, Who being the very nature God, did not consider equality, did not consider equality with God something to be used to His own advantage. Rather, He made Himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, by being made, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the, on the cross. Well, our Lord Jesus is the perfect example for us because he humbled himself in obedience and went to the cross. And when he went to the cross, he didn't do so in victory, he didn't do so in a pretty sight. He went to the cross in, by being despised. He went to the cross bearing our shame. And indeed, it's our sins and our shame, our guilt that put Him on the cross. So of, we, may, we might often feel like the shepherds unworthy, uneducated, unnoticed by the people around you. Even sometimes we feel unworthy of God's love. Well, this same, same feeling that you had or currently feeling, I think our Lord Jesus had felt before. When He went to the cross, the Bible recorded that it was a shameful act, as I mentioned. And this is found in Hebrews 12, verse 2 to verse 3. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, for the joy set before Him, He endured the cross, scorning His shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Well, He endured the shame our shame, yours and mine. But the Bible, this passage in Hebrews tells us that we as His sheep, we as His people can fix our eyes on Him. He's the author, He's the perfecter of faith. He has went through this journey. Whether is it of negative feelings, unworthiness, you are not able to live up to people's expectations. He has felt it, He has bare our shame on the cross. But if you ask me or ask the question, what exactly is a shepherd? You know, I mentioned who is a shepherd. He is our shepherd who will bear our shame on the cross. But what kind of shepherd is our Lord Jesus? What kind of shepherd he is? There are two P's um, that I want to identify this shepherd, which is he's a personal and a persistent shepherd. 
Well, our Lord Jesus is a very personal shepherd. He's so personal that He's not a far away God, you know, that we imagine Him to be, that actually demands our worship on Sunday. He marks our attendance, you know, whether you come to church, okay, raining, raining Sunday, you come to church, extra marks, bonus points. He doesn't do that, right? He doesn't mark attend your, your prayer, if you have said a prayer before your meals, or whether you attend cell group or not, although these are good things, uh, please do <laughs> encourage you to attend cell group, say your grace. But Psalms 23, written by King David, clearly shows us that God is a very personal, relational being. He's not someone far away. Well, Psalms 23, we all know the Lord is my shepherd, right? But in the message version, right, in the message version, it says, God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. Look how personal it, King David writes about his shepherd, my shepherd, God, who is my shepherd. So really like King David, our God wants to know you as an individual. It's a personal, individual being. He wants to be part of your life, whether to provide, to guide. But more importantly, he wants you to be able to hear His voice clearly, to distinguish His voice as compared to the other voices in the world. Well, when my wife calls me on, on the phone, well, there really isn't a need to see the caller ID, right? As long as I hear my wife's voice, I know it's her. And I also know whether it's a good day or am I in trouble based on the tone. Right? Whether I forgot to inform whether, there's a di- whether I'm eating dinner at home or I'm what, I will, I will know it immediately. That's how personal our Lord Jesus wants to know you. And He wants you to know Him too in that personal way. Clearly, this is found in John 10, verse 2 to verse 4, where He says, But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the gatekeeper opens, the sheep hears his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them and the sheep follows, follow him for they know his voice. So it's both ways. The Lord knows us and we know his voice. Which is the same words echoed by King David in Psalms 23. The shepherd uses his voice to lead and make the sheep lie down in green pastures, really showing us that the sheep that are that we trust the shepherd so much that we are willing to be vulnerable and rest in the shepherd's presence. But the shepherd also leads the sheep beside quiet waters, providing that the shepherd provides refreshment and a quench of thirst. The shepherd also guides and leads the sheep along the right paths because the sheep follow him as they know and hear His voice. Well, like I said, God is really not far away. He wants to be near to you so that you can hear His voice, so that He can lead and direct you. But He also wants you to hear His voice so that He can warn you of the danger. And there is a danger. John 10, 11 to 15 says, and this is the famous uh, com- common passage that you hear, I am the good shepherd. Right, wonderful, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. Well, he flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. Wonderful passage, right? And in this passage, Jesus wants to tell us the difference really between a shepherd and a hired hand. The shepherd will never abandon his sheep, but a hired hand will flee at the first sign of danger. Well, however, this passage also warns us that there is a wolf, right? If not, why would the hired hand run away? There is a wolf coming for the sheep. Whether you like it or not, the wolf's role is to snatch and scatter the sheep. Well, imagine the wolf's role is not to eat the sheep. I, I would imagine the wolf would be hungry to devour the sheep, but it's, instead it is to snatch the sheep away and scatter the sheep. And the main objective of the wolf is to ensure the sheep is separated from the shepherd. The sheep is separated from the shepherd. 
Not sure about you, the first sign of danger, right? What will you do? If there's a fire at home, which is quite common now, you hear many uh, news reports of fires at home or an accident on the road. Well, for me, if, if, or at least what I'm trained in the army, if there's a fire, the first thing you shout is fire, fire, fire. You make as much noise as possible to alert others around you, right? And the first sign is to raise your voice, make as much noise. And I think when there's danger, that's what our Lord Jesus wants to do too. He wants to make noise in a sense, good noise, eh? good noise, positive noise. He wants to speak to you. He wants to use his voice to communicate to you. Well, maybe you hear, oh, how come I'm not hearing him? Uh? You know, there's no uh, words from God. Well, sometimes his voice might not be an audible voice, like a phone call, a video, or a voice WhatsApp message. Instead, maybe it comes from the Bible, which we need to read. Maybe it comes from people we meet, but we must meet them whether it's in cell groups, whether it's in our workplace, whether it's in church, so on and so forth. Maybe it's the opportunities presented to us in our workplace. Or maybe it's in the inner conscious spoken through the Holy Spirit. Well, there are many other ways uh, God can speak. But the question is, are we listening? Are we sensitive to, the God, to God's voice? Do we know Him personally? So that when He shouts, that there is danger ahead. There is a wolf coming to snatch you away from him. You can hear him clearly and you will be aware of the danger. You know, in my life, I'm really thankful for pastors who have guided and walked with me right from the time where I was searching for a job after I graduate to the, to the point right now where I'm pastoring. People have come alongside me, encouraged me, spurred me on. Knowing or unknowingly, you know, church members have come up to me, encourage me in my journey. Right? You might think it's a small thank you. You might think, uh, you know, Jia Yu Pastor. All these small little encouragement has spurred me on. I see that God has used you and people along me in my life to encourage me and spur me on. Well, today as we, con- we teach our children the Lord's Prayer, in fact, in our services, we either sing the Lord's Prayer or we say the Lord's Prayer during Holy Communion. In the past, there is a prayer that is also very important. Well, this prayer can be found in Deuteronomy 6, 4-5. In the Jewish culture, they call it the Shema. Right? So Deuteronomy 6, 4-5. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. So the Jewish people will repeat this prayer many times in a day. Right? It's called the Shema. It start, it basically because the word here in Hebrew is called the Shema. In other translations, Shema can also mean pay attention, focus, or respond to what you hear. Respond to what you hear. So for example, in, in Psalms 27 verse 7, the psalmist write, Shema, or hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. So really, to ask God to listen is to ask God to act, to do something about the situation that I am in. When, the God, when God asked the Israelites to listen when they were at Mount Sinai, Exodus 19, now if you obey me or you hear me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession, although the whole earth is mine. Exodus 19.5 right? If you shema me, if you obey me, hear me, Basically, what God is saying in, in just one word, right, Shema, is that listen and obey are two sides of the same coin. And in fact, in, in ancient Hebrew, there is no separate word for obey. If you want to carry out wishes of someone or to someone who has authority over you, so let's say your boss wants you to do something, right? You say, listen to me, these are my instructions. In other words, telling you, listen and carry out what I want you to do. So listening and doing is really the same thing. The prophets warn the Israelites when they say they have ears, but they are not listening. So when really the Bible talks about listening, essentially they are saying, are you listening and obeying? Are you listening and obeying? Now go back to hearing the, the words 
and the voice of God. We can be listening. We can know the Bible well even. But are we obeying? Are we living out His commands? Are we fulfilling what God has specifically told you to do in your life, in this season of your life? Are you listening and obeying? And the wonderful, and when we fulfill God's desire, when we, His wonderful promise, John 10.10, 10, you know, I go so many weeks, so many funerals, John 10.10, 10, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. And have it to the full. Let's mention he, He's not just a personal shepherd, right? He's personal to you, He's personal to me, but it's not just that. He's more than that. He's such a persistent shepherd. So he keep asking. He keep, you know, trying to communicate, trying to talk to you. He's so persistent. Such that he used a parable. He used a parable to describe Luke 15, 4-7 in the parable of the lost sheep. What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the 99 in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulder, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbours, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Well, when I read this passage, I identify myself as that lost sheep. Not the ninety-nine, but the lost Sheep. Now our God, our shepherd God, will search, look, find us. And I believe if we are looking for someone, right? If someone is lost in the jungle, in the open country, you'll be he'll be using his voice, shouting, Where are you? Where are you? I'm here, I'm here. The shepherd will be using his voice, of course, look using his eyes too, right? Hunting, looking up and down. You know, uncovering every creek's corners. And the wonderful part is actually he's not just searching, right? He's actually pursuing because in Psalms 23, verse 6, this again a, a common verse, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Wonderful promise, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Well, actually, the more accurate version, well, maybe is to translate the word follow to Pursue, pursue ardently in the Hebrew dictionary. Aim eagerly to secure, to pursue. So if I can translate it to you and read it to you again, Psalms 23 verse 6, Surely goodness and mercy shall pursue me all the days of my life. So he's not just follow, he's chasing after, he's pursuing you. He's being so persistent in your life whether you are at work, in school, at home, our shepherd is pursuing, chasing after you to be so personal to you. He wants to be so personal and persistent. Well, even if we know who our, what is a shepherd, who is he, who is he, these two qualities, but what kind of shepherd does God play out? And as I was doing my, I was given this assignment to preach God, God the Shepherd, I thought, wow, easy lah, God the Shepherd, Psalm 23, you know, very easy, you know, very comforting message, right? We just lie down in the green pastures, thirsty, we just go to the quiet stream, drink some water, very comforting message. But as I study the Bible passage, really this passage also struck me. It struck me in Matthew 25, 31 to 37, when the Son of God comes in His glory and all the angels with Him. Wonderful promise, huh? Son of God comes again. We need to work already. Second coming. Then He will sit on His glorious throne. Before Him will be gathered all the nations and He will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And He will place the sheep on His right and the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on His right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I am hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. So the shepherd have a role to play. 
other than bring the sheep, sit down in the grass, drink the water, the shepherd at the end of the day will separate the sheep from the goat. Right? What is even more intriguing is the sheep, as the sheep like us, when we perform these duties, this responsibility of feeding the poor, giving a drink to the thirsty, visiting the prisoners in prison, the sheep didn't even know that he was the sheep. They were, he, were, he or she was fulfilling what the master wants him or her to do. Another interesting thing is that in this passage, in, in God's economy of blessing, where he separates the sheep from the goat, he humbles the strong, he strengthens the weak. Especially when we think that it's insignificant, it be a smile to a stranger. An encouragement to a friend, a short text to someone that came to your mind as you were as you are spending time with the Lord. All these are things that God notice, that God records. So if you see this passage and you wonder what actually separates the sheep from the goat, all I can think of is the shepherd's heart. As sheep, do we know the shepherd's heart? Do we hear Him clearly? Do we know who He is? That we can understand the shepherd's heart. And that is to address a need for a brother and sister. And whether you're doing it for your own self, whether you're doing it for somebody, actually you are doing it for our shepherd. Because his heart is always for the people. His heart is to address a need in someone's life. And he can use you and he can use me to address this need. So friends, family, our, our God, our shepherd, may not be some job description or a role that we truly understand because we, are, we will never be shepherd unless you migrate to New Zealand and take care of a sheep. But we, will never, we will never truly understand the full role of a shepherd. But the Bible has clearly explained, show, Jesus has role model what it means to be a shepherd. And here it means he wants to be a personal being, a personal being to you and me. He wants to have a relationship with you to the point that He's so near to you that you can hear His voice clearly and He can hear you clearly too. So if you're feeling far away, you're like, God, you're so distant from me, let me assure you, He is never far. He's never far from you. He wants and He's so persistently pursuing you to be near to you, either to warn you or to have a conversation with you, to walk with you and to have a personal relationship with you. And every, every time, every time you feel far away, every time you feel you're that lost sheep out there, just take heart and know that God, the, our great shepherd, is chasing after you. He is the one that wants to reach out, put you on his back, carry and carry you back to safety. He's not one that ah, leave you out there, but he'll pick you up, put you on his back and bring you back into safety. So friends, I've, I've chosen the, our song of response as He Will Hold Me Fast. I can choose many other songs that talk about shepherd. But uh, two weeks ago, as Alpha usually will remind the pastors, gentle reminder to the pastors of our response song <laughs> to give as early as possible. Usually, I'll tell you, Alpha, sorry, uh, I, I, I do not know what song to choose yet. Can you please give me some time? But a few weeks ago, he asked me and this song came to my mind immediately. He will hold me fast. I do not know whether it's for you specifically in your situation in life. I pray that this song will minister to you as the song has ministered to me. He will hold me fast. No matter the situation in life, no matter the issues at hand, our shepherd will hold us fast. So come, let's pray as we turn to him. Almighty, loving, personal and persistent shepherd, you are indeed not far from us. So hold us fast in your arms. Hold us fast in your arms. 
as we turn to you right now, as we fix our eyes on you, as we worship you with our whole being, Lord, will you just hold us fast in your arms and assure us that you have never left us, you have never forsaken us, you are never far away from us, but you are Lord God Almighty. You are God that never says, never put us away. So Father, hold us fast. Hold us fast. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.